Hello, bonjour everyone. So the, what you see in front of me, I'm going to be in a slightly little rush here today. Just because we have a couple of other places to go to. Um, so what you see over there, of course that's the Dead Sea. Beautiful, beautiful cursed place. And what you can see today is because of the, of the clouds, that's all Israel on the other end. You can probably cross it on a boat, I would say in a boat in 10 minutes, I would say. So back in the day, and we're talking about Prophet Lot, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam's time, when we had that um, azab of, um, on, his, on, his, on his people for, for homosexuality. So it is believed, it is said that three days before the azab, he was told, he he was told by God to leave the premises. So he left with Edith, his wife and two daughters, and some believers may be with him, I'm not quite sure about that. The one condition he had for everybody who was following him was when the azab starts, when the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts, do not look back. And the azab started, God forbids. So Jibrail, basically, Gabriel came, and with the swoop of one big hand, he picked up the village and threw it backward onto the ground. Some remains fell here on the Dead Sea, hence the name Dead Sea. The water started accumulating around that time. And that's where this, this place is, is. Dead Sea is a cursed place in Islam. And again, as the Hadith says, do not wander in those places. Recite Astaghfar as much as you can. May Allah forgive us for the sins that we commit and for the future sins that we're going to be committing. Now I want to take you to a very interesting place, an interesting thing that I have discovered today with my friend Kashif Mustafa. So if we remember the story of Hazrat Lut, as I said earlier, you know, he left with his wife Edith or in Arabic, Adu, and his two daughters. She was a faithful one. She followed him. But the one mistake she made was to look back. Yes, that is her statue. Salt statue of Bibi Adu. Edith, looking back on my left, she turned back and she froze. She was turned into stone. This is a silhouette of a woman. In a lot of script, in a lot of scriptures, in a lot of books, it is indicated that this was the place where Hazrat Salam was traveling to. So when she turned her back, when she heard the azab start, I don't know what the must must have been a loud noise, maybe cries and shouts. But they've been traveling for three days, right? So I would say back in the day, maybe they must have traveled what ten kilometers, 12, twelve, thirteen, fifteen. And that's where they got. So when she turned back, she turned into stone. The daughters also wanted to turn and look at their mother, but Hazrat Tut held on to their hands firmly, strongly, telling them not to turn back. They came back after the azab was gone. They, they then took refuge in a cave that we're gonna go and visit in a bit. And they took, after a few days, they came back to look at the mother, the wife, respectively, and they saw her turn into the statue, stillness, with fear in her eyes, terrified. But wow, what, what a preservation throughout history, like so many years ago, so many years ago. I'm sure the camera is not doing a great justice here, but I can see the shape of a leg on, sorry, this side, this is the leg. She's facing that way, as I said, you know, where the azab came from. She could hear it. You can see the, sh the, the, the shape of a head right here. And that, I don't know what that is, maybe a cap, maybe something she covered her hair, head with. And the arms behind her, maybe. And, oops, sorry. This is where I'm at, facing, looking this way. Wow, oh, 
god. Astaghfirullah. Until next time.